I've made it one of my goals in life to fly the flag for limpets. Um, limpets are a bit of an underdog. Mussels, oysters, cowries, crabs, you know, they get a lot of respect and people enjoy them. But limpets are equally enjoyable. If you open the door and read about limpets and learn about limpets, you'll discover that they're absolutely fascinating. My name is Louise Firth and I'm a marine ecologist working at the University of Plymouth in the UK. Um, I'm interested in how organisms interact with each other and their environments, and I'm specifically interested in limpets. Limpets are marine gastropods, so just like you're very familiar with uh, snails on land, limpets are their marine cousins. Uh, you typically find them attached to rocky shores all around the coastline. Um, but there are many different species, um, but they're most famous for their grazing activity. This one here is Patella ulispinensis, the China limpet. This one here is Patella vulgata, the common limpet. And this one here is Patella depressa, the black-footed limpet. Um, they have a very strong um, mouth part called the radula. It's just like a ribbon with lots of really sharp teeth on it. And it scrapes the rock um, and removes the algae or the seaweed on that rock. So just like cows do a great job of keeping down grass, limpets are doing the exact same thing um, on the rocks, on natural rocky shores, but also on seawalls like the one behind me here in Plymouth South. If you think limpet, quite a lot of the time you think tenacity. These things are hanging on, they're clamping on for dear life onto the rocks. They're actually able to use this tenacity to protect themselves. They're preyed upon by, by rats, by cats, and many bird species. And there are many stories from, from many different places where limpets have actually raised their shell and clamped down on the tongues of cats and rats and also the claws of birds. Um, they've actually managed to drown these animals by the tide coming in um, and drowning them while they've been clamped to the rock by the, the limpet's shell. So we're here at Gadrevi in West Cornwall near St Ives and Gadrevi is one of my favourite rocky shores in the whole of Britain and it's a great example of an exposed rocky shore as in it's exposed to wave action. Patellia lispinensis, the China limpet, only tends to occur in areas of relative wave exposure. Exactly why we're here in Gadrevi. In Plymouth Sound, which is much more sheltered, you don't tend to see many Patellia lispinensis. So this is why we came to Gadrevi to show you that. This shore is perfect habitat, not just because of the wave exposure, but you also have lots of very shallow pools where you have pink algae called lithothamnion. This is a crustose coralline algae, which is important habitat for Patellia lispinensis. Where you have the two limpid epithelials, look what it's living on. It's living on the pink lithothamnion. And this is in line with our theory that there is a special relationship between in biology we have a concept called uh, the ecosystem engineer. These are organisms that modify the environment uh, to res release resources for other organisms or they themselves create habitat. So trees would be examples of habitat forming ecosystem engineers and the classic example of habitat modifying would be a beaver. They chop down trees and create dams, obviously releasing resources for other organisms. On rocky shores, limpets do exactly the same thing. They are both habitat formers and habitat modifying ecosystem engineers. This rock here, you've got really good evidence of limpets exhibiting both habitat forming and habitat modifying uh, features of, of being ecosystem engineers. Uh, if these limpets weren't here, the rock would probably be covered in algae um, because limpets are, are very strong grazers. They basically graze the algae off the rock. And you'll note that the larger bits of algae are only on the shells of the limpet. So they're providing habitat for the organism that they, they feed on. Uh, so the, basically the shell of the limpet is a refuge um, for algae from their own grazing. So they're both habitat modifying by grazing on the algae and they're habitat forming by providing habitat for the algae, the thing that they graze on. The China limpet, Patellia lispinensis, seems to be more important as a habitat former for algae than either Patella vulgata or Patella depressa. The reason we think that this is, is because Patellia lispinensis is aggressive and territorial. It prevents other limpets coming near it and climbing up on its shell and grazing the algae. As a result, no grazing means you've got lots of algae living on the shells of Patellia lispinensis.
Limpets are ecosystem engineers. They have a key structuring role on rocky shores, not just in Britain, but in many parts of the world. Here at Cadrivi, the rocky shore is covered with thousands upon thousands of limpets. Without them, the shore would look very, very different. They have a very important role in grazing algae on this rocky shore. All organisms are important, all organisms should be valued, and we should conserve and value limpets just like every other organism.